There is a virus that has infected over 250 million people worldwide. By comparison, about 35 million people are infected with HIV. Now live to Capitol Hill for hearing on hepatitis C and what the federal government is doing to fight it. That's Tom Davis. He's chairman of the House Government Reform Committee. And they're holding this hearing, just getting underway. Live coverage here on C-SPAN. Viral infection in the United States, affecting nearly 4 million Americans. In the United States alone, over 4 million people are infected with hepatitis C. Why am I sitting here, a member of Congress, probably as ignorant about it as the average American. Within the next 20 years, the amount of hepatitis C that we'll be diagnosing is going to triple. To an incredible 30,000 deaths per year. This is a major public health issue in the United States and around the world. This is a huge public health issue. It's a tsunami in terms of cost. We are looking at an epidemic for hepatitis C. So, quarter of a million people, but in 10 years, going to need it, and we do about 7,000. Yeah. I have the largest hepatitis C practice in the country as a solo practitioner. I am a hepatologist. Many doctors who deal with this um, are gastroenterologists, but they can also treat patients with hepatitis. I specifically have a degree in hepatology, and I've been doing this since 1989. And that was an exciting year for us because that's, of course, the year that hepatitis C was identified um, by uh, Michael Lawton and colleagues at Chiron Corporation. In the 80s, we knew the disease as non-A, non-B hepatitis. Once we isolated in 1989, we got the name hepatitis C because that was the third hepatitis to be isolated. And soon after that, we started with treatments. And when we first started, we used to treat patients for about six months. And of course, at that point, we didn't even know there were different types of genotypes of the hepatitis C virus. So the response rate was unfortunately not very good. The most common, as I stated before, is genotype 1, A and B. And those are the most difficult to treat with interferon. Now, that doesn't mean that people with genotype 1 are going to progress on to cirrhosis. So many patients come to me and say, oh, Dr. Palmer, I have genotype 1, I'm going to die soon. That doesn't mean that. It just means that their response to treatment with interferon may be less optimal than people with genotype 2 and 3. People with genotype 2 and 3 are the easiest to treat. Genotype 2 is the most easiest to treat of all. Um, that's not as common in the United States. And genotype 3 is also not as common in the United States, but both of them respond to interferon quite well. In my practice, up to about 90 or even higher than that percent of patients with genotype 2 or 3 can respond to the current treatments. What I see in my practice many times is people come to me, sometimes in advanced stages, and they say, Dr. Palmer, why do I need to be treated? I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me at all. I feel fine. But if you look at their blood tests or their liver biopsy, Sometimes even at that point they have cirrhosis and they just don't understand why they can feel so well, okay, but have such a serious disease.